Okay, hi there, welcome to a development economics video. Let's spend a few minutes looking at the significance of savings gaps. So what is a savings gap? Well, in many small or often lower income countries, high levels of extreme poverty, in other words, a high percentage of the population living on less than $3.20 a day, makes it almost impossible to generate enough savings to provide the money finance needed to fund investment projects. Hence, in many countries, there's a gap between the savings they have and their investment needs. And this increases their reliance on, for example, overseas aid and also external debt. There's often a big gap, a savings gap between the country's gross national savings, that savings from businesses, households and the government, and the spending needed for investment including infrastructure needed to drive faster growth. This links to the Howard Domar growth model, which is a simple model which explains the significance of savings in terms of financing investment and the importance of investment in driving up per capita incomes. If you can lift the level of savings, that should provide the investment funding and finance necessary to increase net capital investment. And if investment goes up, then the size of the country's capital stock then increases. If the country has more capital to work with, more tractors, more machinery, more technology, for example, over time that leads to higher productivity, which generates an increase in real GDP or gross national income. And if that then feeds through to higher per capita incomes, then people then have more money available to save. So there's a positive feedback loop. Let's look at some data on gross national income per capita, savings and investment for selected countries. The data I'm taking is for 2017-18 and the source is the World Bank. Take countries such as Kenya, Rwanda and Malawi. In those countries, gross national savings are barely above 10% of national income and they fall well below the scale of capital investment needed to drive long-term growth. In Kenya, for example, savings just over 10% of GNI, investment less than 20% of GDP. In both cases, savings and investment are lower than that needed, but savings is much lower than investment. Uh, in countries such as Bangladesh and Cambodia, typically in uh, Southeast Asian countries, lower middle income countries, much higher level of savings actually as a share of GDP, perhaps some social cultural norms at work there. Uh, they have a relatively higher level of capital investment. So for example, Bangladesh is investing just under a third of its national income and it does have the savings perhaps necessary to finance it. Interestingly, in countries such as China, very high rates of gross capital investment and a substantial level of gross national savings. Of course, their per capita income is several times higher than countries such as Bangladesh and Cambodia. Look at Mozambique, which has a huge savings gap. Their savings are low as a share of GDP, 13%, but uh, last year they had a huge level of investment, nearly under just under half percent of GDP. A lot of that linked to the discovery and now the investment needed to extract uh, reserves of oil and natural gas. So why are savings significant for a country's growth and hopefully development? Well, savings provide a flow of funds into the financial system. For example, commercial banks, perhaps insurance companies, perhaps pension funds. Savings can then be harnessed, if you like, repackaged to provide credit in the form of loans for business investment and perhaps important credit for new enterprises and households needing to borrow money. Savings help smooth household spending from month to month, particularly when incomes and jobs fluctuate. And savings often in households are often used to finance the basic education for more than one child. Typically in countries where savings are very low, that might imply, first of all, that per capita incomes are low, but also that perhaps a country is choosing short-term consumption-led growth over longer-term investment-driven growth. So most economists believe that it is important to lift the level of savings as a share of GDP over time to help fund capital investment. 
However, there are other ways of overcoming a domestic savings investment gap. One is for a country to attract inflows of foreign direct investment. And you'll know from your study of development economics that many countries are able to do that. Secondly, countries may be able to achieve external development finance from inflows of overseas aid, or perhaps net inflows of remittance incomes from a country's diaspora, people living and working overseas. On the domestic front, governments might try behavioural interventions, behavioural nudges to try to encourage people to save. And more generally, in the long term, you need industrialisation strategies to move uh, output towards higher value added industries where perhaps real wages on average are higher because of course if you can lift per capita incomes people have a greater um, potential uh, ability to save some of their income. Some countries are also trialling interventions such as conditional cash transfers. You're giving households cash but conditional on uh, meeting certain um, targets such as immunisation of children. And other countries, including the likes of Kenya, are taking trials with a strategy of universal basic income, providing a minimum guaranteed income for each member of a household in poor villages and poor towns in a bid to lift uh, the base, if you like, lift incomes and therefore perhaps generate some household savings. More generally, uh, this video has focused on the importance of savings for growth the fact that in many countries there is a significant gap between the level of gross savings and their investment needs and the ways in which you might want to overcome that.